this hey everybody how are you today I feel really weird wearing a headpiece like this like I'm supposed to sing and dance or uh, do magic tricks or something so <clears throat> so this this talk uh, this is a new talk uh, one I've never done before so uh, like uh, most word camp talks when you get up here uh, so is your content helping or hurting you so I want to go through just a whole bunch of points and uh, I guess kind of the subtitle of this talk that I came up with the other night is you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the superb. So I want to uh, just kind of go through all this stuff. But, but first off, you know, thanks everyone for being here. Today's a beautiful day in San Diego. You could be anywhere else on the beach or something like that. And you chose to be here. And uh, thanks to all the other speakers, the organizers, the volunteers, everyone who makes WordCamp possible and as great as it is. And uh, I've been to WordCamp San Diego a couple times before, but this is my first time speaking here as a San Diego resident. So I chose to wear the Padres hat today just to commemorate that. Although I did grow up in New York, and I'm a Yankees fan, and uh, my grandfather would probably kill me right now. But, any but anyway, so who am I? <clears throat> my name is Greg Taylor, and I run a, marketing, a WordPress development and marketing firm called Marketing Press. We have a couple offices, San Diego, Tempe, Arizona, and New Jersey right outside of New York City. And my passion is content. You know, I... I kind of I got backdoored into the development game you know as a content creator and I founded a small content agency with another gentleman and we were launching all these great content strategies on these lousy sites so it just made sense for us to kind of go into that the, into the development and that's where marketing press was founded and that was seven years ago so now you know everything has changed and everything keeps changing you know, with content, you know, I'm a, again, I'm passionate about content, I'm a blogger, a vlogger, I love Blab, I'm on a Meerkat, Periscope, all that stuff, any kind of, you know, photography, music, any kind of content that you can push out there, you know, I absolutely love, and WordPress is just a perfect platform for you to express that and for you to put, push that stuff out there. So, on social media, uh, I'm GR Taylor 2 and that's uh, across the board pretty much anywhere, if you ever wanted to find me. <clears throat> so, I'm a pretty casual, low-key guy. This is a nice work camp Sunday. This is actually a huge crowd for a work camp Sunday. This is fantastic. Uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. Let's just talk about it. Interrupt me. Let's talk about it. I don't want to sit here and talk at you. I want to have a conversation and a dialogue. You know, uh, just because I'm up here doesn't mean that, uh, you know, all those words that I hate, guru, rock star, Jedi, and all that stuff. I'm just a little bit further on the continuum with this topic than than other people. So let's just talk about it. Let's help one another. And hopefully one day I show up at a work camp and I see one of you guys talking on a, con on a topic just like this. So to get things started, so who are you guys? So just by show of hands, how many, do we have marketers out there? Do we have any other uh, creatives, like designers or photographers, musicians, good stuff like that? All right, I hate asking this question. Do we have any developers out there? Oh my God, you guys scared the shit out of me. <clears throat> that's why I talk about content all the time because it's like the developer is like, no, that's not how you do that. I have a better way to do it. <laughs> but no, you know, one time I spoke in uh, WordCamp Phoenix and I had a lady, I, right as I started to segue from this part of the talk and she, go, she raised her hand and she said, well, you missed me. I said, well, okay, well, I said, I'm a writer. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so do we have any writers out there? There you are, all right, thank you. Thanks for not sticking it to me this time, right? <clears throat> so, so superb content is imperative when it comes to moving the needle on your business goals. You know, we always want to move the needle and just kind of, you know, I, I always say, you know, in our company, you know, we want to push the needle in the red on all the dials. You know, we want to make sure that we are going as hard as we possibly can and pushing out as much as we can and making sure that we are using the correct channels for each one of, you know, the goals that we're, we're trying to achieve. You know, the big thing now is the competitive landscape and content is busier than ever. I mean, think about how noisy content is. Think about who, you know, who are we competing with when it comes to people's attention now, when it comes to content. You know, there was a time that we were probably all, you know, competing with one another or different people who look like us in different rooms. But that's no longer the case. We're competing now with Netflix. 
We're competing now with you know Amazon, who you know, all the big guys pushing out content. While that content is different and probably more sophisticated and you know nothing that we touch here, you know it's still trying to get people's attention. You know, and, and the big thing also is consumption habits have changed. As the channels change, consumption changes. Think about, you know, I don't know. I was going to say on a nice rainy day, but it doesn't really rain here. But, you know, if it was like a nice rainy day, what would you do? You know, you binge watch something, I'm sure. You know, and that's how content is now consumed. So us as content creators are people who want to be successful when it comes to creating some sort of content. You know, we have to think like our audience. We have to think like a user. We have to think like a fan. You know, a friend of mine, Brian Fanzo, you know, iSocial I fan, Fanzo always says, think like a fan. You know, he's big on, like, the Periscope and the Meerkat type of blab and, like, all that broadcast stuff. Like, we have to think like them so that we can reach them and capture their attention. So consumption habits have changed more probably in the last five years than ever, you know, if you think about it. So the three goals for content, as I always look at it, are one, content to position yourself as a subject matter expert and to increase search visibility. Two, content that, that uh, <coughs> creates a community around your product, service, or brand. And then three, conversion. And for the sake of this talk, you know, and, and all, every time I go through these three goals, it's, I define conversion as us getting a user or somebody on our site to act in a specific manner that we want them to, to increase a business goal, you know, to, 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 to move something. Now, is there any goals that I'm missing out there? It's always a trap question. Any, am I missing anything? Well, usually, you guys are smart people, but usually the, the dumber word camps I go to, that you always, I'm kidding, I love them all. They always say, well, you know, generating revenue, making money is a goal. And, and, and while that's the overarching thing that we try to do, I, I don't consider that a goal. I consider that a byproduct of meeting those three goals. If you meet one of those three goals, eventually you're going to start to generate revenue. And it might be quick, it might be long, you know, who knows? You know what I mean? But that's a, generating revenue, as you know, I always define it as a byproduct of meeting your goals. So, yeah, sure. So it's, uh, one is content to position yourself as a su or your brand as subject matter experts <clears throat> and to increase your search visibility. Two, creating a community around your product, service, or brand. You know, the Padres hat was a great idea when I was in the car, but now it's hot up here. Two, creating a community around your product, service, or brand. And then three, increasing conversion. We cool with everything so far? Any? Yeah, question. Love it. Interrupt me. Let's do this. So can we, do you think that we can make that as like a sub of community? You know, are we right around there? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And you know, I, I get to it a little bit later about how we educate people nowadays. And you, you know, maybe we can elaborate and talk a little bit more about that. And if I don't address it, just let, let's talk afterwards because I think that that's an interesting point to actually dis to discuss. Yep. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's, that's another interesting point. I mean, so now, you, you know, what, what you were saying, what, what's your name? Liza. What Liza was saying was, you know, education here. You know, and what we're saying is maybe it's community. Maybe it's 
It's positioning, subject matter expert. You know, I'm sure that there's some conversion in there somewhere. They got them to do something. So it's really interesting how that one area is sort of a blend of all three. You know, and uh, this is the first time I've ever actually thought about that. So that's actually, thank you for saying that. Was there another hand somewhere? Did I, anybody else? No? Okay. Hey, if you want to interrupt me, you just want to talk, I'm cool with that too. I mean, this is just stuff that I thought that you maybe we could, I could give to you. But, I mean, if it's not what you want, ask me questions. Let's, let me give you what you want. So, there, I did see a hand back there. Yep. Okay. So, then, then you know, it, it truly is a, a blend of all three. I mean, and it's interesting. It's it's. You know, you said one thing, I said something, Liza said something, in the back they said something else. It's like, it's also in, you know, how the audience is receiving it, right? Because I imagine that different people will receive that message and that content differently, and how they interact with it, you know, is going to be, you know, different than how somebody who's not interested or how somebody who maybe is on a, a deeper level, you know, th than the one person. Definitely an interesting thing to, to talk about. I, I bet you there's a WordCamp talk in there somewhere. So what are the various types of content? I mean, I kind of went over this, but blog posts, video, all that new rich media stuff, you know, the, the Blabs and the Periscope and, and the, the, the Meerkat, Instagram, you know, photography, podcasts, you know, um, I don't know what am I missing? Uh, music, uh, anything, you know, uh, broadcast. I mean, all that stuff is all content. You know, there was a time, a place, a time and place at WordCamps that when we talked about content, we just talked about blogs. We just talked about the written word. And now, how cool is it that WordPress has evolved to be a true publishing platform for almost anything that you want to publish? I mean, like, that's pretty freaking cool, right? I mean, <clears throat> and, you know, back to what Matt's vision was, you know, if you ever hear Matt Mullenweg talk or if you ever read anything they said, you know, his vision for WordPress was to democratize publishing. You know, and, you know, we always hear publishing as publishing words. You know, we always think of that, or my mind always goes there. But it's actually publishing anything. You know, and WordPress now is that platform to get, you know, any... It, it, WordPress now is that platform to exercise your voice no matter what it was. You know, I found WordPress because I... I don't know, I always felt like I had something to say. And know where to say it, and then I was like, holy cow, I can actually publish something on the web myself? You know, this is like way, way back when, you know, it first started. You know, I, true story, I'm not going to lie, I actually started on Blogger. How many, how many other people started on Blogger? All right, I'm not alone, see? That's like the, the progress. It was like something, then Blogger, and then WordPress, WordPress.com, then you went to self-hosted, and you're like, oh my god, I can do all this stuff? How amazing. So... Did I say that? Yeah, various types. Okay. So do you think the goals vary based on the medium? Based on, on, on how, on whether it's a photo or a podcast or uh, a blog post or this or that? You think the goals vary? They absolutely do. And I can't stand here and say, you know, Liza, if you go, Liza's the only person in the room who, whose name I really know, so I'm going to pick on her. <laughs> I appreciate it, and whatever. Now it's your cross the bear here, <clears throat> but but you know what I mean. Like I can't stand here and say what I do for my clients is going to work, and the same goals are going to be attached for Liza's clients, or for Liza, or for any of you guys. You know the the goals vary, and it's up to you to figure out what the goals are, and how that you can go ahead and make things better for your brand. You know whoever you're working with, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Uh, welcome to Point Loma. Yes. Mm It's the same. I'm, I'm using the same context, pretty much. 
I'm using it in the, in the same way. I might have used the wrong word. How about that? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, no. I, uh, you're, you're, the way that you're thinking about it is exactly correct. So, all right. Just a real quick reality check here. That's a lot. I'm hot and sweating up there. We all together here? I mean, is there any other questions we want to talk about before we kind of go forward with stuff? No? This is actually, you know, out of like the 15 or 20 word camps I ever talked about, this is the most questions I ever got in the middle of the presentation. I absolutely love it because, again, it gives me an opportunity to actually address what you want. You know, when you, when you speak at word camps, you know, there's only so much you can cram in to a short session to get people to go ahead and learn. So it's like I always want to give people something that they can go out and they can make a change to make things better you know, in the hallways, or on the way home, or wherever. Yeah. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. First of all, <laughs> if you know any musicians and they wrote songs and have them published, ask them <laughs> to use them. <laughs> because that's going to be the easiest way to go through. You know, other way, you know, otherwise you do have to get the rights and clearances. And uh, depending on the piece and uh, piece, when, when I say piece, depending on the music, depending on who it is, is going to kind of be your battle right there. So like if you want the Rolling Stones to do something for you, well, good luck. And if you do get them to do it, tell me how you did it, and then let's, let's all talk about it. But if, you know, you, you just have to make sure you have rights and clearances. Uh, a lot of times YouTube will strip that out, you know, if it's posted there. Um, there are sources, uh, Creative Commons type sources, where you can get some music. Um, I know iMovie comes with a whole bunch of licensed music. You can buy some rights. But, yeah, yeah, uh, it's always error on the side of, buying it and not infringing on somebody's copyright because you're going to be really bummed when you get that certified letter or whatever, you know, for whatever, you know, for a 15 second clip. So, <clears throat> okay. So now the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> I actually got permission from Clint Eastwood to use this because if I didn't, he'd kick my ass. No, I'm kidding. <clears throat> so let's talk about the good, the good content. And I want, you know, good content is not good enough anymore. But good content is, traits of good content is it's informative. I hate that I have to say the second bullet point all the time, but spelling and grammar is right. I mean, this is like a sixth grade paper now, you know what I mean? Make sure that it's, the commas are correct or whatever. It has good information. It's shareable. It's a good length. It's potentially addictive. Now, I say... <laughs> I'm going to go right back to that one. It connects people to people, and it's delivered with some velocity. So I want to explain the last three points because I'm big on these three. You know, uh, and I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to start in the middle. People to people. You know, when I was in college and, you know, when I was first doing whatever, and, and ever, are you guys taking photos of the slides and stuff? I, I have this ready to launch on my website with a voiceover that I recorded last night when I was practicing this because... Just this, these words on the slides may not, you may lose the message. So I actually went through and did that. So I'll post that as soon as we're done. So it used to be two, different, two types of businesses, right? There was business to consumer and business to business, right? And that's what everybody tried to do. Are you a B2B marketer or are you a B2C marketer? Well, now none of that matters, right? Nobody should ever worry about being a B2C or a B2B. We all need to focus on being P2P, people to people. Because what we do is there's people creating content, people behind the brands, and, you know, big brands and all brands nowadays are more human than ever, right? You can get somebody from Southwest Airlines to tweet you back, kind of put a name and a voice to the brand, you know, to help you with different things. You know, we're all working with people. You have to remember that people are responsible for brands and people are responsible for the buying decision. So that's what we're trying to do when it comes to content. We're trying to connect people to people. Potentially addictive. Anybody listen to the first season of Serial? How addictive was that, right? How, 
out of the people who raised their hand and did listen to it, or let, let's say like House of Cards or whatever, you know, you, use your favorite series. Did you guys, actually that's a, House of Cards is a bad example, but th think of like, you know, the, the serial episodes dropped once a week or once every other week whenever Sarah Kane, you know, did it. How many of you guys listened to them and waited the next week with like bated breath? I can't wait for the next one to come. Also, how many of you didn't listen to it because you wanted to stack a bunch of episodes? Right? You want to talk about content that's addictive? I mean, if I'm putting stuff out there and, I, and people are telling me like, oh, you know, Greg, I didn't watch your latest video because I want to wait until you publish three or four more so I can watch them all together. I'm like, awesome. Right? Or they said, oh, I can't wait for the next one. Rarely does, does anybody say that. But you know what I mean? It's just like, it, it's addictive. And then deliver it with some velocity. I'm a big believer in business and marketing and anything of the velocity of the idea. You know, I get ideas all the time. And, you know, my associates and people I know and <clears throat> real well and, you know, a lot, a lot of people, you know, that I've seen here this weekend, we all get ideas. And the biggest mistake sometimes we do with our ideas is we sit on them too long. We sit on them and we wait for them to be close to perfect in our mind or a close to perfect plan. And then they either sit in your computer somewhere or in the back of your head somewhere or my favorite on a cocktail napkin, a bar cocktail napkin somewhere, and nothing ever happens to it. So I'm a big believer in the velocity idea. When you have an idea, I love to take it to about 70, 80 percent and launch it, put it out there into the wild, and let the world tell me what they want to do with it. Because unless you do that, you, you don't really know. You're using, you know, my grandfather used to say, you know, when you're in your own head, you know, you're behind enemy lines. So don't think too much, kid. It's the same thing, you know what I mean? You can overthink all that stuff. So I'm a big believer in velocity idea. Get something, get it out there, and go. So now and forever, good will never be good enough for success. It's just the way that it is. There's too much noise, too much competition that we all have to get through. So let's go through the bad. And how am I on time? Am I all right? Okay, perfect. I'm going to have to cruise through this then. Traits of the bad. It's vague. It's too long or too short. It's self-serving. There's no focus. It has a so what factor. And a so what factor to me is when somebody like consumes the content and they're like, meh, all right. You know, you go to a restaurant and you're like, oh yeah, how was that meal? Meh, it was all right. You know, that's bad. You don't want that. You know, we want to avoid that as much as possible. The ugly. Oh man. So, has anybody cut the cord from cable in here? All right. You know what? I, I, I kind of did. Not, well, I, I, I guess I didn't. I have it in one room, and the other room I stream shit, right? <laughs> so, I was streaming some stuff the other day, actually working on this presentation, and I was watching some stupid show on A&E, and, you know, episode and episode and episode. And in their little durations there, like, what's it, 9 or 12 minutes, you know, they cut for, like, those little commercials. They play the same commercial, and, right? How annoying is that? I almost wanted to stop watching a the show. They play the same, it was like an LG phone commercial every day. And then I was streaming something today on ESPN, and the same commercial came on. I just thought it was a and &E I was pissed off at. I guess it's all of it, you know? But it's like, it's, it's one of those things where that's ugly. That's the repetitive stuff, you know? Other traits of ugly content, it's over-promotional, it's boring, it's the look at me, look at me content, like... You know, my company is so great. My, you know, we did this. We did that. We invented sliced bread. You know, it's clickbait titles. Clickbait titles. If anybody is still working with clickbait titles, oh my gosh. Please, please stop. Please. 2006 is gone. Content has no purpose. It lacks goal. It has like the, well, what the F factor. Like, what, 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 you know. Like, that's all ugly. That's no good. So now, let's get to the good stuff. The superb. And these are traits that I found of really good content. And I work with a lot of really great content creators. Uh, I work with Jay Bear. I work with Gary Vaynerchuk. I work with some of those guys. And I get to watch what they do. And, like, it's amazing how, how it all comes about. So it's helpful. You know, Jay wrote the book Utility. You know, if you can help somebody else, if you can solve their problem before they have the problem or before they realize it's a problem or while they're searching for the problem, that's a win for you. You know, the creator thinks like a reader or thinks like an audience member like we were discussing before. 
It stimulates thought. You know, <clears throat> anything that stimulates thought, it might inspire somebody to do something. It might make them, or at, have, they might do things differently. It moves the needle on your goals. It helps you go towards your business goals that we talked about in the very beginning, those three goals. Uh, again, you know, increases conversion. One of those goals, but I, it's important enough that I want to put it up there again. It helps somebody else become an expert. If your content can go out there and help somebody else become an expert, I guarantee that you will be their hero. Your company, your brand will be their hero, and they will always remember and they'll tell everybody how great your content is. It's the perfect length. Now, anybody know what the perfect length of content should be? <laughs> So, not too long, not too short. It depends. Yeah, a absolutely. What's that? No. <laughs> so, my definition of the perfect length of content is however many minutes, words, seconds, whatever, it takes for you to clearly and concisely convey your point. Right? I, I, I like brevity. I don't want to go in there and just kind of elaborate on stuff because my ninth grade English teacher said I need... 2,200 words on this paper. You know what I mean? We're not there anymore. We're all fighting for people's attention. If the quicker we can make it, the more helpful we can make it, the better it's going to be for everybody. Maybe a viral, if you're lucky. I don't know. Can't plan for viral content. You know, uh, I, I had one piece once go viral. I was a, a diner on Kitchen Nightmares. And I was living in Arizona. And it was a crazy Amy Baking Company episode. If you go back and watch it, I'm sitting there with my then at the time girlfriend and it was a nightmare <laughs> hence, hence the name right I went home and I wrote a piece on medium and I woke up in the morning and it had 133,000 hits my good god now why because it was relevant and it was timely and because of the velocity of which I put it out there I published it the next morning right after the show it's shareable and quotable it connects people Possibly there's multiple voices, and that's mostly when we're getting into, like, bigger blogs and bigger sites. You know, the voice of which, you know, I write or, you know, my, my videos will not connect with everybody. It's just not going to happen. You know, if you can find other voices to kind of uh, hedge your bet to connect with other audiences and everyone, that's fantastic. And if you can do it, I definitely suggest it. Multiple mediums. It's posted means post the damn shit, please. Evergreen. Everybody know what evergreen content is? It's timeless. You can read something that was written in 2016, three years from now, and it still has the same value. You know, uh, a lot of blogs, a lot of people that I work with, one quick second, a lot of people I work with, they strip the dates off their blogs now. You know, a lot of reasons for it, but part of it is for the evergreen factor. Yeah. Yep. Something that you want to go ahead and tell your circle and your sphere of influence about. Whether it's on social or at the kitchen table or however you want to do that. Your coworkers, your employees, your clients. It's a piece of content that you want to tell somebody about. Not me, the reader. No, it's shareable. I mean, it's it's something that, you know, you're going to... The shit that I went through, the, 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 the bad, the ugly, and, and now the good. I'm sorry, I swear a lot. I did grow up in New Jersey. I apologize. So. My mom's even worse than me, trust me. She's a, like a truck driver from the Bronx. Actually, a school teacher from the Bronx. But anyway. <clears throat> but it's, it's that beginning stuff. That's not shareable anymore because it's garbage. Right? Only great and suburb nowadays are shareable. So... What's the scariest button in the whole WordPress user interface? Publish. How many times do you guys have things queued up and like, oh, I don't know. You know what? I don't, uh, mm, I don't know. Let me see. You know, Nothing happens until you hit publish. 
You know what I mean? And a lot of times you're going to think your content is superb and your metrics and analytics are going to say, no, that was just okay. You know, some of the pieces of content that I wrote that are, I created that I was like the most proud of got like zero response. It's like echo. So, yeah, a lot of times. So, we have any questions here? I got like five minutes left. I'd love to answer questions rather than go through more of the stuff that I have planned because you can get that online or whatever. So, you want to just talk about it? Let's. Yes. So we all have to be, we all have to, we all are our, our own media companies nowadays. Right? We all are our own brand storytellers nowadays. You've got to tell a better story. I think that that's the long and short of it. I would concentrate on what story are you, what story are you telling? What story do you want to tell? What story is being received? And within your organization, like, I don't know how big it is, but within your organization, everybody has a different story to tell. My story as the founder of the company is way different than employee one, which is way different than employee five. You know what I mean? And which is way different than the client story. So it's like you have to kind of find what story is going to resonate with people. Yep. Shoot. Uh, I, I think that if you can if you can connect with the people that you're trying to connect with, that's fine. But I just think that somebody like myself, like I can't connect with everybody that I would want to. Now, with that being said, I know that not everybody is an ideal client to work with us. But at the same time, like, you know, maybe you can just you know make the pool bigger by using different voices, especially if like somebody's voice is like, you know. Gary Vaynerchuk's and like really annoying to a lot of people, right? I mean, he, it's it's annoying to a lot of people. It's like a Howard Stern. You love Howard Stern, you hate him. It's like Jim Rome. You love him, you hate him. You know, it's like that type of stuff. So if you can find a different voice to kind of connect with the middle, maybe give it a go. I mean, yep. You know, I think that that's, a, that's something for you to ultimately decide with recognizing the traits and the personas of your audience. You know, our, our blog posts on our site are WordPress 101 blog posts, right? Because that's our client. Now, if your client's more sophisticated than that, then I would recommend maybe splitting out the content. You know, categories are great. You know what I mean? Maybe do something like that. But... If your client is like a WordPress kind of newbie or like a one-on-one type of person, run with that content. Help them learn more about WordPress because what happens, the more you teach somebody about something, they're going to realize a couple of things. One, it's way more complicated than I thought. Two, it's going to take way more time than I have. Or three, holy shit, I don't even want to, I don't want to do this. Right? One of those three things are going to happen. Four may happen, they may do it on their own, but they'll always remember where they learned. I don't, okay, last question. In the, way in the back. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big believer in personas. A uh, big believer in knowing who your audience is. You know, just like I asked who you guys are, 
you know, you guys are my audience right now. You guys are the pool of people maybe consuming the content. Yeah, it's a re- very important to know because then you know how to speak to them and also how not to speak to them. You know, a lot of times we get caught up in jargon and all this institutional knowledge and phrases and stuff that nobody else knows what the hell we're talking about. So I would definitely spend some time on personas. And uh, it'll also make you a better business owner and stuff now that you actually know. I mean, it's, it's an amazing exercise. So, all right. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you guys being here.